Investment Framework Fortune. I'm your host, Ben, and it's time for another one of Ben's stock reviews. Now, today's stock review is a subscriber requested review. So, I've got multiple inquiries about taking a look at NNDM Nano Dimensions, and we're going to check it out and see what it's all about. And if you're not subscribed already, think about hitting that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the stock market, crypto, and other financial investing related content that I'm putting out and let's dive into it. So I'm a little familiar with NNDM because it has popped up several times during the day trading live streams and I'm pretty sure I've traded it multiple times for short day trades, probably some losses and some wins in there, but I never actually looked into this company. so. It'll be interesting to see what they're about and what some of that hype has been about over the past year. So this is Yahoo Finance and I just want to take a look at the numbers real quick and see what we're looking at. So their income statement, they got $3.4 million in revenue and $1.84 million in gross profit. So that's not too bad. We do have some negatives, uh, but those numbers I really don't look at that much. Let's see, the shares outstanding, $248 million and a float of $246 million. You have a very little insiders holding this, which is a little concerning, but you do have institutions uh, holding 11% of it. And as of March, there are some shares short out there, about 16 million shares short, but with the $246 million float, that's not that big a deal. We have no dividend, total cash, looks like they've got $670 million, so quite a bit of cash. And then they have a levered free cash flow of $2 million. Their operating cash flow is a little negative, but apparently this company is making some money. There is some interest in institutions holding it, and there's people shorting it, so definitely has some interest. So what is Nano Dimension about? We'll take a look at this video. Basically, they provide intelligent machines for fabrication of AME, which stands for Additively Manufactured Electronics. Basically, they 3D print electronics for computers, you know, motherboards, circuit boards, different parts of uh, hardware like that. Now, this type of technology is catching a lot of steam. I would honestly say a lot of value, but I'm not that familiar with this part of the tech solution market when it comes to 3D printing and mass 3D printing like this seems to be. But I do know anything that speeds up manufacturing processes is valuable, so this definitely has piqued my interest. So right on their homepage, you can see the Dragonfly LDM Precision Additive Manufacturing System for Electronics. That is a whole lot of words for no reason. So it's a one-stop solution for agile hardware development, innovative circuit design across a wide array of industries, powers companies to securely control entire development cycles through in-house additive manufacturing of a bunch of big words with speed and precision while reducing costs. So that's right there. That's really all I need to see. If they're able to produce these parts with speed and precision while reducing cost, that means there's going to be a demand for what this company is offering and I'm a tech bull and the main reason why is because I don't think we're going to go back to the stone age every year we see technology develop faster and faster and they, and this is part of the reason why because they have intelligent machines that more than likely do not make mistakes like humans do so all of these very specific parts like these circuit boards that are being put together by this machine you're going to have less defunct products because there's no human error and you're gonna have faster products. Now my biggest curiosity at the moment is what does their competition look like? There could be other companies out there. I'm pretty sure there probably is of different companies that have this type of technology where they are basically 3D printing manufacturing parts. But I would say there's a whole lot of market cap out there even if there is a lot of competition because this type of technology can be used across many different sectors. So right here they have the Nano S 3D Additive Fabrication Service, a pioneering 3D designs beyond IPC rules and rapid prototypes of complex multi-layer designs. And basically it provides designers and engineers the freedom to design and produce free shapes that cannot be manufactured by any other printing method. So if Nano has some technology that they only have access to and they have it patented and it's better than everybody else's, 
well that could definitely bring in a lot of hype and revenue to this company so here we can see all these different case uses and that's what I was saying basically just little parts of computers or whatever electronics that these can go in but it sounds like they can pretty much make whatever they want with this system and there you can see research aerospace defense medical automotive industry like I said across the board so if you really want to get deep in nano dimensions you can really dive in here and read a bunch of big words I'm not going to read through all this but you're more than welcome to I'm sure there's some valuable information I'm just going to skim through it right there that caught my eye silver there's silver inks I wonder if that's real silver or not I'm guessing this is real silver because a lot of these circuit boards and stuff do use silver see then they have some case studies it looks like they developed conductive inks for RFID antennas and then they worked with Harris Corporation to explore the potential use of 3D printing for radio frequency circuits and that project included designing, simulating, and testing an RF amplifier 3D printed on the Dragonfly Pro system and comparing it with performance of an amplifier developed with conventional manufacturing techniques. The resulting data showed similar RF performance between the 3D printed and the baseline amplifiers demonstrating the viability of 3D printing technology to produce a functional RF circuit. So you can check out the white paper, find out some more information there. Let's take a look at the management team, see what the CEO is about. He says he has decades in operating roles as CEO and chairman as an active hands-on investor which is really interesting from looking at the insider investing there's not a lot so I don't know if he's invested in his own company or not that was my concern so knowing that he is an active investor an active investor and he possibly is not invested in his own company that does bring up some concern now he's ran both public and private companies with global operations so has some experience uh, he's built several successful companies his degree in mathematics computer science and diploma in automation and mechanical engineering so it sounds like he knows his stuff that's what you want to see on the team is people who know their stuff so here's their investor presentation and you can go find this I'll leave it linked in the description below but you can dive in this and check this out learn a little bit more about all the things they're making and so their machines are controlled by AI algorithms so that's very very interesting I've been saying AI stocks are going to start getting real popular here in the near future because they're making a lot of advances in AI so these machines already are using some sort of AI which just shows us how close we are to the future of the Jetsons soon they'll be making Jetsons cars out of nano dimensions 3d AI printers <laughs> so right here we're showing they've invested 80 million in research over the past six years they do have a hundred million in cash and no debt as of January 2021 so the Yahoo Finance has not updated, but almost a billion in cash and no debt. I like that. That's nice numbers. And they have actually sold some of their 3D printing machines. So that's a good sign that this is an actual real company making real revenues. They actually have something that's out, a product, because a lot of cheaper stocks, you'll see them have a lot of potential. But maybe they don't have the patents yet or maybe they don't have the financing quite yet to do what they're trying to do this company's already turning revenue so that is a good thing and they are getting recurring revenues from consumables increases on their base systems they have the ability to keep making revenues from their customers that is going to continue to help them build into the future they do have over three dozen patent applications and this is their stages for growth that they're looking at I'm trying to get to this MPV medium production volume system and I'm imagining by 2030 they're probably going to be high production volume so they do have a plan here for 2021 and 2022 it says riding the elephant that's an interesting plan name since COVID-19 eruption is not about quarterly revenue they are focused on upside through accelerating product technological edge but we have sold approximately 60 machines already and then it says contrary to biotech downsides a failure at any stage is protected as a sale of the existing business at improving multiples as per stage is a viable alternative and then here's the stage five large chuck highest throughput and loose loop 
So Corona did affect their business is basically what they're saying. And here's some of their customers, three multi-billion U.S. defense manufacturers. That could be big. There's a lot of turmoil going on in the world. So if we go to war with somebody or multiple countries start warring, defense manufacturers and defense companies, that type of stuff, those stocks will start to get a boost in price. So then you can see they also have two European defense companies and multiple secret services who's bought their products. Wonder what presidents have their secret services making. Then we have one multi-billion US value technology conglomerate and then multiple leading research institutions around the world. And they are certified all the way around. Looks really good there. All right, so basically I've pretty much seen all I really need to see. This is a tech company that is producing parts for other tech companies. I don't think they're going to go anywhere, but let's dive into the chart and see what we can find there. So here's the max chart. Looks like they came out around 2015 and they've been on a pretty strong downtrend since then below all indicators at the moment. And you see here recently where they started popping up, that was in December, and they got rejected off of that downtrend. Now it's kind of holding up on the 9 EMA. But like I said, this is a 20-year chart, so let's go to the one-year and see what we're looking like. So here's the daily one-year chart, and we can see a big spike back there. That's This is actually ran from $0.89 cents to $17.89 in a year. It was just kind of consolidating sideways after this initial pop and then it got another pop up for a little pullback and then it got a massive run up from November into January. And since then, it has been pulling back. This is a pretty steep downtrend. And at the moment, they're under the 200 day moving average. There's a lot of resistance above with these indicators. It is very bearish. I would have liked to see this hold above seven and hold above this 200 day moving average because if it doesn't then it probably is going to drop down to six that was previous resistance so six dollars would be the next support area more than likely and if that doesn't hold all the way back down to four but with the potential i'm seeing in this company and they've got no debt and a pile of cash i think the five dollar to seven dollar range somewhere in there where that all that support is is a good area possibly for an entry. Overall, I think this stock is a pretty decent long-term play. Not really any chart pattern or anything right now to look for a swing trade on because it's just bearish and going down. I would like to see it break the strong downtrend before I looked at anything with a swing, but long-term, I mean, you, you never really know how much lower this could go. It very easily could go back to 65 cents, but I think in this area, there's a pretty good amount of support and volume has died off here recently, but that's the whole stock market. A lot of this could be the dips and the volatility in the stock market. All the tech sector has been getting hit pretty hard since after February. So it may be more to do with that than it is the actual company. So let me know what you think about Nano Dimensions NNDM in the comments below. I'm your host, Ben. Until next time.